As we all know, the anime industry is growing rapidly. Crunchyroll just announced it has 1 million paid subscribers. Funimation now dubs anime within weeks and even hours of their broadcast in Japan, and more shows than ever are being licensed. To put it simply of how it feels to be an anime fan, oh, it's so good. Because of this growth, other companies have been throwing their own hats into the ring. The newest being Amazon. At the beginning of 2017, they launched their new anime subscription service called Anime Strike. At launch, it boasted over 1,000 TV anime episodes and movies to watch, with a plan to update every week. These episodes include both subs and dubs. And at the starting price of $104.99, it's easily affordable for any anime fan. If you're stupid! While the subscription price itself is $4.99, it's only available to Amazon Prime members. Now to some people, the $100 a year is no big deal. Amazon Prime has a significant amount of benefits like free two-day shipping, streaming music, videos like TV shows and movies, and more. The fact that there's an additional charge to have access to anime is where many draw the line. Heck, a lot of people draw the line at the $100 price point for Prime. To pay for one year for Anime Strike, it would cost you $160. That's with a limited library, where you can probably get most of the same shows on a cheaper site. You know, like Crunchyroll? Speaking of, you can get a yearly subscription to Crunchyroll and Funimation for $60 each. That's $40 cheaper than Anime Strike. Now you may be asking yourself, you're not forced to get the subscription, so why care? Three words. Exclusive streaming rights. This is where we come to the point of the video. Recently, Sentai Filmworks has announced multiple new spring season acquisitions, where a majority of them are going to be exclusive to Anime Strike. These include anticipated shows like Armed Girls, Machiavellism, Sagrada Reset, and even... Now the simple solution would be just to illegally download or stream them. But as someone who loves the industry and wants it to continue to thrive, I do my best to avoid that at all costs. And it seems a lot of other people do the same thing, despite popular belief. I've seen numerous posts, tweets, and comments of fans saying how disappointed that they'll have to wait for the release of their show or until it becomes available on another streaming service. This would be another reason why I was compelled to make this. I genuinely felt for my fellow fans. Many ask, why would Sentai do this despite the predictable backlash that it would receive? <laughs> Anime Strike is a new service, and it didn't get much of a chance to grab anything from the winter season. But now it's been established for three months, and it has an opportunity to grab a few shows that would compel fans to subscribe. In reality, this is a smart and basic business strategy, and that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with getting exclusive shows to help drive subscriptions. That's fine! But don't put it behind two paywalls! Look up the phrase shooting yourself in the foot. And look, look, there, there it is. There it is right there. If Amazon included it with Prime, that would be better. But if it had the option to keep it completely separate from Prime and making it its own channel, that'd be even better. As for Sentai, deals like these two seasons in a row start to raise questions in the community. Is Sentai doing this in reaction to the Crunchyroll Funimation partnership? I can imagine Amazon would be willing to pay significant funds to get their channel started. And with Funimation and Crunchyroll being best buds, it only makes financial sense for Sentai to make a deal with a giant like Amazon. The only real issue is that it burns a massive hole into the pockets of everyday anime fans. Between Crunchyroll, Funimation Now, Netflix, Hulu, Daisuke, and now the $105 to start Anime Strike, fans are going to have to make some tough decisions on who their loyalty lies with. Competition is a healthy thing for the industry, but having one too many competitors may hurt the industry in the end. Having too many options could lead to frustration, which may drive some to just head to a free site to watch whatever series they'd like to see. But perhaps dropping a price to a reasonable point may help quell that issue. Five bucks would be the cheapest rate you could get for a monthly subscription alongside Daisuke's premium membership. Either way, it seems like the industry is taking yet another turn that will, in the end, just have to adjust to. Perhaps contacting Amazon and asking for separation from Prime could help. Seeing enough feedback may have them rethink their business strategy. Personally, I'm disappointed on Sentai's decision and may have to skip a show or two. And unfortunately, many other fans seem to be in the same boat, making this spring season a particularly stressful one. But in the end, something, 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 I don't fucking know how to end a video. <laughs> Are you ready?